Ukrainian defense company DevDroid has integrated an AI-powered optical target detection and identification system into its ground robotic platforms, the company's CEO, Yuri Poritsky, told Militani. According to Poritsky, the system relies on a three-camera configuration designed to assist operators in identifying battlefield targets more quickly and accurately. One of the cameras is optimized for daytime operations and can detect enemy personnel at distances of up to 1,000 meters. A second daytime wide-angle camera provides situational awareness, allowing operators to assess terrain ahead of the ground robot, track enemy movement and identify areas free of hostile presence. The system also incorporates a thermal imaging camera which can detect human targets at ranges of approximately 600 to 700 meters, depending on weather conditions. To train the artificial intelligence responsible for recognizing battlefield targets, particularly enemy soldiers, DevDroid used extensive real combat footage collected from the front lines. The AI system features multiple detection modes, including separate settings for identifying human movement and for detecting military vehicles. There is a mode that reacts to any change in the image when any object moves. The ground robot operator receives a signal, and there is also a mode that specifically detects people. Poritsky said, Earlier reports emerged that Ukraine was set to field its first officially codified domestically built grenade launcher armed ground robot. After the Ministry of Defense approved the Droid NW-40 robotic combat system for service with the country's armed forces, the decision allows the system to be formally supplied to and used by Ukraine's security and defense forces, marking a major step in integrating robotic platforms into frontline operations. The Droid NW-40 is a ground-based unmanned robotic complex designed to carry out high-risk combat missions without exposing personnel to danger. It is the first codified Ukrainian Reconnaissance and Strike UGV adapted to mount a 40mm automatic grenade launcher, either the MK-19 or AGL-53. According to its developers, the system is intended to engage a wide range of targets, including lightly armoured vehicles, such as infantry fighting vehicles and armoured personnel carriers, unarmoured vehicles, exposed enemy personnel and hostile firing positions located outside cover in open trenches or behind natural terrain features. In addition, the robot can conduct continuous remote battlefield surveillance. The UGV is equipped with a new Wally 40 combat module, which provides rapid target acquisition and wide engagement angles. The launcher has a maximum effective range of up to 1.5 kilometers and can fire either single shots or bursts with an onboard ammunition load of 48 rounds. Mobility is fully electric. On a single battery charge, the droid NW40 can travel up to 50 kilometers on paved roads or up to 40 kilometers off-road. It can operate continuously for up to 12 hours while moving or remain on standby in a static position for up to 120 hours. Control of the system is entirely remote using multiple redundant communications channels including Starlink, LTE, mesh networks, Wi-Fi, and sign dot link. Targeting can be performed manually or by coordinates, enabling strikes without operators being anywhere near the line of contact. Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Arachi on Friday met with Lebanon's Prime Minister and Parliament Speaker in Beirut. According to Associated Press during a briefing Arachi answered a question about protests sweeping Iran, saying they are different from those elsewhere because, the United States and Israel have both officially announced their involvement. They are doing their best to turn these peaceful protests to acts of violence. 
Despite Iran's theocracy cutting off the nation from the internet and international telephone calls, short online videos shared by activists purported to show protesters chanting against Iran's government around bonfires as debris littered the streets in the capital, Tehran, and other areas into Friday morning. Arachi's visit to Beirut came as the Lebanese military said it had concluded the first phase of a plan to disarm factions, such as Iran-backed Hezbollah. Arachi headed an economic delegation for talks with Lebanese officials on regional and international affairs during his two-day visit to Beirut. Iran desires having comprehensive relations with Lebanon, including economic partnerships, Arachi said. <laughs> و اون این که هم آمریکا و هم اسرائیل رسما اعلام کردن که در این آشوب ها دخالت دارن و نقش دارن تظاهرات و اعتراض های سلحامیز رو به خشونت بکشن و به آشوبگری بکشن یکی از محورهای اصلی من در همه دیدارها گسترش روابط تجاری و همکاری های اقتصادی بین دو کشور